Dr. Homebrew is brought to you by Five Star Chemicals, providing safety and cleaning supplies for brewing, distilling, and winemaking at fivestarchemicals.com. Dr. Love. Stand aside, nurse. I'm Dr. Homebrew. Another episode of Dr. Homebrew, and we're ready to drink some beer. I hope you are, because I sure am. Yeah, and for change, we have some people in the studio with us here. This is yeah. kind of cool. We yeah, have homebrewers in the studio. It's a homebrew invasion. Go ahead, Doc. It's, it's not so dry in here now. It's so. not so dry. <laughs> it's a lot nicer. It's nicer? It's more moist? Do you like the, the, well, moist, I, the I male just, moisture? I like having people in the studio when it's just you. And, well, I mean, Brian's cool, but it's just yeah, you. Yeah, I know. It's just me. Oh, yeah. it happened. <laughs> oh, i got to turn everyone's mics on. I'm not used to it. There we go. There we go. Yeah. That's probably good enough. Uh, Say his fault. Uh, it's right. Um, so we have a beer for you, and then we're all going to do a commercial calibration of uh, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. We have yeah. another commercial calibration in a little bit, and of course, the purpose of that is just to get you guys tasting along with the BJCP judges, man, uh, which is, if I remember correctly, Brian and myself and not Doc. That's right. right. I, I forgot about that. It's not a judge. No. No. <laughs> On well, purpose. That's, on, that, that's, on, that's by design, buddy. I yeah. know, I know, for sure. No, but uh, you know what I mean? Uh, we want to uh, just kind of elevate your palates a little bit, ele- give you a little more vocabulary to uh, discuss these beers that we kind of drink all of the time. And, and why are these, you know, uh, staples in our in our beer drinking environment? Uh, I guess here in Nevada, Pale Ale has been around for a long time, and uh, I think it will continue to be around for a long time. It, it, it pretty much set the standard for the pale ale. So we're going to uh, drink on that. And then uh, uh, Brendan, John, and Leo brought us. What the hell did you bring us? You turn this music off, stupid. You're stupid. A Vermont double IPA. A Vermont double IPA. What the hell is a Vermont double IPA? That's not a style. True. It's a double IPA fermented with Vermont Giga Yeast. Yeah. Basically, okay. yeah. We yeah. use the Giga Yeast Vermont. Uh, and. Uh, Kind of uh, take off on the Lawson's style, um, very fruit forward and not too much danky and musty, but you know, mm-hmm. still loaded up with hop. But uh, wanted to bring out some of those citrus you no know, notes. You're, you're trying hard not to say the word juicy, and yes. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate that very juicy. much. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay, well, that sounds great. I can't wait to drink it. Before we do that, though, I want to tell you guys about Five Star. You can go to fivestarchemicals.com and learn about everything you need to do to clean and sanitize your home brewing equipment. You can't do both at the same time. You have to clean and then you have to sanitize. That's what you have to do. And do it all. And do it over and over and over again. That's a really important key in making good beer. We all know that. And uh, the people at Five Star are making it really easy for you guys to know that too. So check them out. FiveStarChemicals.com. They sponsor this show. We love them dearly. We wouldn't be here without them. Um, you know, if you see them around, buy them a beer. Yeah, I was brewing today and um, earlier I, I, you know, I cleaned out a, a carboy and I had a or not, I, uh, a keg actually, and um, had this you know PBW water in there, and I just like you know finished dumping out my coffee pot, and it had all these nasty like streaks on it of coffee and stuff, yeah. you know, stuff starting to build up. So I was like looking at the keg, looking at the coffee pot, and I just dumped it in there and let it sit for <laughs> for an hour and uh, and scrubbed it, and yeah, nice and clean. You know, I mean, you can use it for a lot more. It's just, yeah, PBW is, is a, the wonder drug that works wonders. Yeah, I do it all the time. I use, uh, I, I clean my like stainless steel cookware, which yeah. is stupid. I, if, I, if I had to go back in time, I wouldn't have bought stainless cookware because... It gets dirty all the time. Dude, stainless cookware is the best. It's Except great. To... It's great, but uh, I don't know. I'm I'm all cast iron guy. Yeah, now. cast iron's good too. Um, but when I do my, you know, I have a couple nice stainless pans, and uh, so I'll clean them with the PBW. I'll clean the the top of the oven with a PBW. Uh, it's great. I love yeah. that stuff. Yeah, I mean, sometimes getting them to not stick is is like getting them to the right temperature, where you like actually just you know you get you dump, put eggs in there and just you, you get it so yeah. it's nice and hot when you dump them in there and they just they just sear and then they won't stick, you know. Yeah. So love, if you just yeah, dude, uh, um, cast iron pans, cast iron, cast good. iron, so good. I love it. Eggs, perfect. Yeah, perfect every time. 
It's yeah. Doc, it's a little more challenging. To you use cast iron, right? When you guys, when you were a kid, you probably forged your own out of iron that you <laughs> yeah, pulled you from the mountain. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, low carbon steel was not even a thing. Right then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you get, oh, back in the day, of the Boy Scouts. Yeah, there was a lot of cast iron. Who had to haul that? Those things are heavy, man. Yeah. Yeah, it was, but. You had one pot that did everything, and you know that it just did everything. Well, that's true. Yeah, and that's true. Uh, you, you clean it out with dirt, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You want to, you clean yours with salt and and oil, or yeah, just, do you you just uh, well? So there's there's this guy that I've been kind of following. He's like you know I, I call him the new like Jamie Oliver or whatever. Right. He, uh, I, he's on like five names, but he's on uh, Serious Eats uh, that website. He okay. just has a book. It's like Kenji. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've, Lo- I think I've heard that guy talk. Yeah. Alt Lopez or whatever the hell. Yeah, yeah. Um, super, super knowledgeable dude. But yeah, he, he released this kind of article about how you you don't have to do all like the crazy shit with your cast iron where you put it in the oven and layer it with Crisco and let it bake. Yeah. Basically, you just get it hot to what it's smoking. You put some oil in there and you just kind of rub it around and you let it cool. And then you yeah. do that like three or four times. And that's how you initially season it. And then after you cook it, you can use soap with it. You can scrub it off, you don't, but just don't let anything sit in it, like uh, a yeah. liquid, and then just throw it on the oven, put it back um, on, the stove put it back on let it get smoking hot, turn the heat off, put some oil in it, rub it around, and that's it. And my wife and I have had ours for a year or so. Yeah. Love them. I There's don't use no soap rust. on mine, but I like, if you cook something gnarly on really heavy, flavorful on it, yeah. the next time you cook, sometimes you get a little bit of the... Yeah, so I just so, soap, and, soap and water, scrub it out. Right. Yeah, the secret's okay. not letting it sit. Like, I have a cast yeah. iron. I do steaks. I do ribeyes on it yeah. and throw them the, under the broiler. But if you just natural bristle brush, mm-hmm. right, you can just rub that out with hot water. But you got to, like, within 10 minutes. You're right on it. Yeah. Right? Like, it'd be on it. If you yeah. leave it in the sto- like in the sink sitting overnight, <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. Season it all over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, should we take a break and then get um, into the beer? I don't need a break. Let's start talking uh, uh, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Our commercial calibration. So if you guys uh, you know, at home, pause this. Go self, gra- grab yourself a uh, six-pack of Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. And uh, how fresh is this one, uh, Brian? I think we should we should so t- discuss that as much as possible. Yeah, today is we do, um, so. we're recording. It's August 17th, and this was packaged on uh, June 29th. So it's about a month and a half old. Okay. I got... I walked around the corner from my house and... uh, Oh, Doc has the same... with a different one. Bought it at the AMPM. Was it June? You said June. Yeah, June June 29th. Okay. Same one? Yeah. Okay. So it's only about a month and a half old. A little label on the top of the back label. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. So, I mean, that's that's reasonable freshness, I think. You know, you're... I think that's what you're going to expect. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to get a beer, it's, it's traveled for a month and a half somewhere, usually, if it's sitting in your convenience store, so... But at least it'll be sitting there refrigerated. Yeah, refrigerated yeah. and not not too much light on it. So, yeah, it's it's kind of it's uh, styles are changing, but uh, this is a, a common thread that's there. And when we talked about doing a commercial calibration, it's like let's do one of the classics, and you know now they're east and west coasts, and and um, they're pushing a lot of beer out there. So this is one that people can get and taste with us, and they they go to great lengths to make sure that it tastes the same on the east coast and the west coast. So. Um, yeah, I'm getting, you know, in the aroma, definitely the the hops come out on top there. It's a moderate citrus, um, a little bit of a light grapefruity note underneath it, and an, and an earthy kind of hop character in there. Um, you get low kind of light carameliness from the specialty malts they use, and uh, a little, you know, the kind of nice brightness from the base malt just supporting that. But the, yeah, the hops definitely win. It's not like a hop monster by any means today. No, not at all. Man. But at the time, if you can imagine tasting this in 1980, what came out of a homebrew recipe and being there at the time when there were like 100 breweries left in the United States, you know, when there had been like 1,700 before Prohibition, What's and tasting this, it's like... Wow, okay. Yeah. You know, this has some flavor in it. It's interesting, and I wonder if it's on the style guidelines because it's, you know, such a, a staple. But uh, here are the, the examples. Ballast Point, I'm sorry, uh, <clears throat> Modelo Grunion Pale Ale, uh, Firestone Walker Pale 31, yeah. uh, Great Lakes, whatever, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, Stone Pale Ale, and Trogues Pale Ale. Drinking Pale 31 and then drinking this, it's like drinking, uh, I mean, a, a, a Pilsner and a Stout. I mean, they're so, they're the so style, different. Yeah, the Style Creep is, has, cha- has changed the beer style already. Yeah, it's, this is like, you know, right now I think of it as two styles. I think of classic American Pale Ale and then 
American Pale Ale 2.0. Like even Stone made their yeah. 2.0. They updated their Pale Ale, which, you know. I mean, I guess you got 30 to 50 IBUs, your OG 1045 to 1060. That's a decent swing. 4.5 to 6.2 ABV, 1010 to 1015, SRM 5 to 10. Yeah. Uh, this That's one, a pretty wide choke. Yeah. And this one clocks in at, you know, it's 38 IBUs and 5.6 ABV. It's kind of middle of the road for a lot of those those specs it's not wimpy and it's not too heavy uh but it's also not yeah. too bitter and not too overwhelming on the hops i mean some of the some of the the other pill ales you get these days are bordering on ipa to me and and it's totally just, you know okay yes yeah. people like hops but there's something to be said for the balance and the restraint that you can get in a in a what i would call a classic america pill. yeah new Dogtown from uh, lagunitas is like that yeah, um, I, I think it's bordering on an IPA. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's too it's too bitter for me. It's a good in beer. my mind for the style. It's, it's a great tasty. beer. Yeah. I, I'm drinking it all the time now. But uh, I don't know. There's something to be said for yeah. kind of kind of the old the old guard. You know what I mean? Well, it's a very refreshing beer. It's clean and it's and it's just you know there's there, it's not just too high in alcohol where you're like wow it's kicking my ass. It's just you know. Um, it's you know point six stronger than most of the the basic American light lagers. It's you know not that much stronger, you know a little richer, definitely a richer color. It's got a nice golden color, low off white head, kind of sticks around for quite a while, and um, excellent clarity. Just a nice looking beer. Um, yeah, and the, in the flavor, of the hops are again up front with it. It's not like wow, boom in your face, which is kind of a medium low. Um, nice citrusy hop, um, a little, you know, maybe some tropically notes in there too, but not not crazy gnarly modern hops. Um, anyway, so you know the the clean, it has a really super clean ale fermentation. The Chico American Ale yeast is just kind of out of the way of the beer, lets the ingredients shine through. Um, you know, you get a low little toastiness in there and the malt too a little breadiness a little toastiness a little caramel and i'm getting like a light little mineraliness in the water like a sulfate kind of quality hmm. but um you know cleanly fermented uh, finishes kind of medium dry and the hops and and a little bit of the malt lingers with it in the aftertaste it just goes down clean and it dries off and then you want to take another sip um mouthfeel wise medium light body Medium carbonation, no alcohol warmth really to speak of. Uh, it's just it's slightly smooth and creamy. I'm, I'm not getting any astringency. It's a little bit again crisp and drying kind of on the palate. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's a classic pale ale. Classic hops. Uh, you know, Cascade changed everything. They they <laughs> yeah. they brought it in in, in uh, 1971 and just. Uh, you know, before that, you had your cluster and your nuggets. And your, American hops weren't seen as something that were really exciting to brew with. And and the the craft brewers that came out, you know, out of the home brewing scene in the seventies, started putting breweries out in the late seventies and into the early eighties and beyond. They they wanted to use what was local to them and and what was unique to them. You know, local local sourced hops and Cascade fit the bill. It was just like, hey, here's. It's got a nice citrusy character to it. Yeah, very American different. hops are not, yeah. not too bad, you know. And, yeah, now look at how many hops they grow in the Northwest. Here. <laughs> yeah, right. It's insane. So, yeah. Um, I mean, how much more classic can you get than the, uh, than the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale? It's just, it, it, uh, it started, you know, I mean, it's along with some other breweries at the time, Anchor and these guys and, yeah. You know, uh, some of the little ones that, that didn't survive, but uh, there was there was some cool things happening, especially on the West Coast back back in that time. So, and I saw it when I was at uh, NHC a few years ago, and Ken Grossman was giving the keynote speech. He had pictures of what they used to brew on, and it looked gnarly as and funky as some of the shitty homebrewing equipment you see around. You know, I, it was like. Um, uh, uh, dairy equipment that they brought in and used for brewing, and it was like just just pieced together, and they just made it work. To so they could brew enough beer to push out there and start doing something with it. But they obviously knew what they were doing. So, um, and then he flashed up some copies of the various iterations of homebrew recipes that they had gone through yep. to, as they were kind of prototyping this, and you know what became a classic. So I think they have had definitely had a good eye for balance and something that that had the potential to 
to go forth and do it, it's done. You know, it's well, and that's what this style is about, which is pretty so, cool. The style yeah. is is balance. I mean, it used to be. <laughs> I mean, now it, it, it can yeah, be out of balance and still be okay. Yeah. Well, what did you give it? Do you want to score it? Uh, let's, let's see here. So even though, why well, figure that? Even though it's a month and a half old, it, it this is actually one of the better examples yeah, that I've had of there's it. No, no oxidation. It's clean. Yeah. It's not. What do you think, Doc? Is it? No, I think I got a different bottle. Oh, really? You did? Yeah. Uh, I didn't get oxidation out of it, but I almost got no hop aroma, almost zero. Huh. Okay. It, it, it was. That's why I kept looking at the born on date kind of thing. <laughs> okay. Um, were the, were the you, mountains blue or? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Shit, they're green. It's probably also a little cold because I just pulled it out of the. Yeah, but it was just. I, you know, I chased it every way this beer's ever been, been served. <laughs> that's true. Uh, anywhere from just fantastically fresh mm-hmm. to the most. Horrible keg in, in Vegas you've ever had. Yes, totally. Uh, and yeah. it depends on where you're sitting in Vegas on how fresh your Sierra Nevada is going to be. What do you mean? If, if you're at a good table, mm-hmm. uh, you're, it's going to be really fresh. If you're like playing the quarter machines and not talking to anybody and you're sitting at the bar and you <laughs> ask, for, ask for one of these, it comes out of the stale keg. That's what I do. It's you, insane. Are you serious? Do you no, think get, they do that? They, they have, they have it, better it, it beer? Goes, it goes where they come. Yeah. Really? I mean, it just it was. Cause I went from here to here to here, and it was just. Where are you going? Like five different places to get me this beer. <laughs> it was is 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 totally different. And then you get uh, you know one from some place that's been letting it sit warm. Yeah. Uh, to it's just it's the whole gambit of this beer, okay. and, it, and it changes with how it's handled so well because we're we're expecting a certain kind of thing. It out really of it. does, and you know what beers uh, anchor steam. Changes in, uh, immensely yeah, yeah. as it as it gets older and warms, and so does Sierra Nevada Paleo. Yeah, and it, those two beers to me, uh, 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 Sam Adams Boston Lager changes oh, really uh, uh, immensely as as well. And I don't I, know what what it is about these beers. Uh, I noticed that about Sam Adams when we were on the East Coast in, in Philly. Yeah, it was like wow, yeah. right there. Was, they were good. That's great. It was good. Man. It was <laughs> good. I mean, it's good anyway. But this was like wow, it's really yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, but this is we expect this to be such a standard. Mm-hmm. And to be kind of the same as your go-to pale ale, it's, it's remember back when it first came out, and everybody's like, "Wow, this is clean, refreshing." Oh, hops! Oh my god! <laughs> and it was it was just so refreshing to have something new like like you, you coined it. Yeah, Cascade just changed everything. Yeah, uh, and everybody's clamoring to get everybody had one on their table whenever you're sitting down to dinner, and everybody's having one. <laughs> uh, and now it's just it's if it, it, if it's in your refrigerator, nobody bats an eye. They just kind of just grab it, and because they know it's yeah. a safe go to. Um, but I've had it just it changes so much. You never know what you're going to get, and sometimes yeah. it's it, this one's not skunky. It's not not cardboardy, nothing like that. But it was all the hops just. Just fell out of this one. Interesting. I, I was expecting something. I got nothing out <laughs> okay. of it. Okay. All right. I should have uh, hunted for one that was bottled yesterday. I, I should have driven up yeah. to the brewery. <laughs> you should have. And, 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 you know, well, I'll be, and the, I'll, I'll you. be in Chico tomorrow. Okay. So maybe I'll swing Have by. some fresh there. Yeah. Some I, fresh. You know, fresh I will agree with you in that I've had it when it's when it's so fresh that you almost, yeah, you almost get some IPA like qualities it, yeah. out of it where it's pretty substantially. You know, the bitterness comes through a little more, and the hop comes through a little oh, more freshly. I mean, it can be too fresh sometimes yeah, for me. Like, or it's just not melded it yet, work. and it's, yeah. it's, it's just yeah. not working yet. That you need a, a little bit of age on it to, to where everything kind of meshes together this a little bit. kind of what I expect of it, of it, you know. It's not it's not old. It's not way past its prime. No, not at yeah. all. But, and it's not super fresh where it's like, oh, dang, they just pushed this one out. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is kind of you know <laughs> middle of the road. This is a bottle of Sierra Nevada right here. Yeah, and it's, I, it's, I've, uh, had, I've had I've had it a lot worse. It's a very good go to. So. But yeah, it's a yeah. very good go to. It, it it's a good safe haven, and it, it's it's a good thing if you're just starting out making pale ales. It's a, it's a, actually a good one to, to model it after. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I w- I would say just you know it, it's a it's. It's it's uh, an excellent beer. I mean, it, 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 I would give it like a forty three, which is at the top end of excellent. Okay. If it was uh, a little fresher and a little better bottle, you could get into outstanding and be you know forty five to forty six, forty 
you know, 40 something. Yeah. But yeah, it's a, I, I scored it a 43. Awesome. I think it's a classic. It's everything that I, you know, you want to throw a score in it, Doc? In a classic pale ale. I'm going with his score. Okay. Yeah. I just, I just feel like I, <laughs> yeah. I got, I got short changed here and yeah. I, and I would be, uh, given a score just because of the lack of whatever I didn't get out of it. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I always kind of wonder, too, if we were, we were tasting this blind mm-hmm. and not knowing it was a Sierra Nevada, would we score it the same? It wasn't juicy enough. Good question. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> juicy right. enough. Uh, yeah. So, no, yeah, but it does, there that. is a fruitiness, too. That's another element in the, in the aroma and in the flavor that comes through is the esters. Uh, you know, you get a nice apple pear kind of fruity esters in there popping up from the ale fermentation. And um, at the time when all you were used to drinking was lagers, that was also something surprising. And it also melds well with the citrusy aromas and flavors of the hops that are in there. So yep. it's just, you know, nicely balanced beer that worked out and, and made some history. So Awesome. Okay. Well, yeah. cool. Uh, well, that was Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, our commercial calibration. And, uh, yeah, drink it. And we'll be right back, and we'll be drinking some uh, something called a Vermont Double IPA, which I, I think maybe is made up. Uh, but we'll find out. It's Dr. Homebrew, <laughs> back after this. <laughs> Hello, fellow BNers. This is Sully from the 21st Amendment Brewery located in San Francisco, just two blocks from Giants Park. Before Nico and I opened the 21A and before I was a professional brewer, I homebrewed on my small four-burner apartment stove in a back house in Santa Monica, California, making my extract brews before graduating to the daunting idea of all-grain brewing. Homebrew books and information was hard to come by back then. The Internet hadn't been invented yet, along with other things we take for granted today, like electricity and potable water. One thing I wish I had back then when I was learning was a radio show that could teach me the ins and outs of brewing and answer questions that I had about homebrewing, a resource for making great craft beer. The 21st Amendment Brewery is excited to be a proud sponsor of Dr. Homebrew, a great show that teaches you what you need to know about making incredible beer. Good stuff. Listen up. You might learn something. I certainly did. And thanks for your support. Tasty Crack Games. Since the first time the Brewing Network microphones turned on, more beer was behind it. More Beer sponsors the programming on the BN because, like you, they love brewing. And like the Brewing Network, they love sharing their knowledge. MoreBeer.com isn't just a website to place your next equipment or ingredient order. MoreBeer.com also gives you access to free beer information that will make you a better brewer. Go to MoreBeer.com and click into the Learning Center. You'll find podcasts, technical facts, video tutorials, and more, including access to The Buzz, More Beer's social network of more than 5,000 members. And some of them might even be crazier about beer than you are. Get over to morebeer.com today and take advantage of the buzz, the forum, the learning center, and make sure you're signed up to receive the newest More Beer catalog. More Beer, bringing you absolutely everything for beer making. That's it. I've had it. I am never putting hops in my beer again. What? Why? It's just too ridiculous. Insane prices, stupid contracts, high shipping costs, crappy selection. Dude, you need Nico Brew. Nico Brew will rock your f***ing face right the f*** off your f***ing skull. $5 shipping to all 50 states, plus fantastic international rates get you low prices on Nico Brew's great selection of hops and more. Whether you're a home brewer, a pro brewer, or a home brew shop owner, Nico Brew can get you the hops you need in increments big and small, single orders, spot buys, or full contracts. And there's only one place to join the uber special secret elite. Elite Bare Bones Club, where you'll get the best deals anywhere. Holy f***ing shit. NicoBrew.com. N-I-K-O-B-R-E-W. Nico Brew, your bare bones buddy in the brewing business. Now, back to the examination. All right, thanks for sticking with us, everybody. Before we jump into this uh, Vermont Double IPA, I want to tell you guys about the iDip. We talk a lot about the iDip here because we love the iDip. 
a lot here. Uh, the Smart Water Brew Testing Kit, or the iDip, as it's affectionately called, incorporates a revolutionary photometer system, which is the first and only one on the market with its own app. So a photometer... Handheld, you put a little water, four mils of water in there, put a test strip, you wiggle it around for 20 seconds, and that's it. You don't have to do any math. You don't have to do any sort of titration. You don't have to count anything except, uh, you know, 10 seconds of your life. It's pretty great. It's awesome for your home brewery or for your commercial brewery as well. It's definitely not one of those things where it's one or the other. It can it can scale up with you wherever you want to take it. Uh, it pairs via Bluetooth, and then you can upload your water uh, results instantly to your own personal water profile, and then you can add that. You can uh, uh, share that on Facebook or whatever to your uh, homebrew club, or you can email it to the other brewers on your team, all that kind of stuff. You can uh, test over 40 different water quality tests. Uh, it comes for uh, four companies preloaded and you can test for things like total alkalinity chloride calcium hardness ph sulfate blah 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 blah. all more uh yeah like i said f- over 40 that's a lot that's a lot of tests man and so you can use it uh, you, uh if you have a pool see this is this is the deal You're right this is the deal brian if you have if you're married and you have a pool and you want you want to tell your wife, I want to get one of these things for for brewing. She'd be like, No, dude. What I want to do is get this for the pool, so I can better <laughs> accurately measure all the chlorine that I'm putting in the pool, and so we can stay safer and save money. And she'll go, You're the best. You're the best husband ever. So you're a home brewer with the pool and a and a reverse osmosis system for your house water system, and you yeah, you need um, you need the eye dip. Yeah. All right. You've reached that point. You need to take it to the next level. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, go to smartbrewkit.com. Learn all about the iDip. And uh, if you enter TBN10 you, uh, checkout, you can save 10 bucks on either the standard or advanced Smart Brew testing kit. Smartbrewkit.com. Check them out. You might want to get the standard one. The standard one? Why? Yeah, for you. For not me? The, not the advanced. No, I'm, I'm no. too stupid. <laughs> I'm I didn't just say that. Dumb. No, but you implied it. I know. Yeah, I know. Of course I did. Look, I may be an idiot, but I'm not stupid, okay? I don't know, whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> Water um, testing kit that even JP can use. <laughs> I've used it before. I like it. I think it's a cool product, man. <laughs> it is. But see, and if, if, I, if I monkeyed around with my water at all, which I probably should do, but I'm not smart enough to do it, I would totally buy one. Uh, like, I can't make pale ales for shit. They, they, like any, any, any pale beers, uh, they're not hoppy enough, and I need to adjust my That's water, true. and yeah. I just don't. Yeah. I just don't. So, so I know you have sponsors, but mm-hmm. there's a free kit at Home Depot you can just send in. Nope. You put a little vial in, and they mail back your exact water profile. Yeah, you can do that. You can, you can, you can it do doesn't that. change that much if you're on a groundwater. I mean... Municipal it, supply in the in the Bay Area does for sure. I think it does. Yeah. Anyway. But this way, you know. So if you're if you are building your water from the ground yep. up, then you can test it right there, and you know exactly yeah. how much it is instead of doing all that math. So you can definitely do that route. And it's a lot cheaper, uh, but this way is a lot I mean, more. It's, pretty, in, it, it's kind of instantaneous too. Yeah. 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 Where I am, sometimes it's like seventy thirty ground and surface water, and then they flip it. Other times it's like yeah. thirty to seventy. Yeah, it you gets know, crazy and, out here, yeah. especially with that drought going on. All right, we have Brendan, John, and Leo. Right? Full studio. Yes. Did I get everybody's name yes, right? Yes, sir. All right. And how long have you guys been living together? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, how long have you guys been <laughs> brewing together? Uh, about four years. About, about four, four years. years? Okay. Awesome. And uh, how'd you guys meet? That's Homebrew a club? No. Work? Uh, <clears throat> our wives. What is the show rated? Okay. Our wives, <laughs> our wives are in a uh, uh, Los Madres group. So, uh, a what? You know, Los Madres. It's... Uh, Women who get together, similar age children, mm-hmm. and we were the moms. We were drug to these family events. That's Spanish. We found each other at the See. beer cooler. Oh, nice, nice. They drugged you and they brought you to. The- <laughs> That's, right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, for sure. What? So now you guys are friends and brewers, and they're hating. We're, we're not hating friends. The day we just actually brew together. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> yeah. hating the day that they. That's right. You, I should you, you don't know how John, John's our mascot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my, my <laughs> wife is not part of the mom's group. I, I met them because I love beer, and I love brewing beer. So Nice. So you're the odd yes. man out, the That's most right. the most hated one? Yeah, I, I have freedom, as they call it. So um, I, I think they're, the, they're jealous of me. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, why yeah. wouldn't they be? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so what is? tell me what a Vermont-style double IPA is, please. So we were trying to do, as you said, we're going to avoid the word juicy. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, thank so, you. So, you know, we wanted a really uh, bright, fruit-forward uh, double IPA that drank 
not like a double um, and brought out the the match of this is when we get into the rest the you know the recipe it's it's basically a hundred percent citra hop um, paired up with that Vermont um, giga yeast um, and the, the the coupling brings out a lot of that fruit esters and that's that's the style we were going for mm-hmm. um, very drinkable very fruit forward very crisp um, and that's the style so again it uses Vermont uh, Vermont yeast okay um but that's about the extent of the the vermontness so we were chatting at the break and uh you guys were talking about you were trying to go for one of those cloudy ipas but without the cloudy yeah exactly so we we replicate the mouthfeel mouthfeel so we used um oats in the recipe instead of wheat um and then uh you know so it, it crisps up and 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 clarifies have you had many of those new england style ipas yeah i've had a bunch so i, okay. I went to school in boston that was actually when you were talking about you know um uh a lot of the the east coast style that's kind of what i wear in the shirt from yingling and trogues <laughs> i actually grew up in hershey oh nice um so shout out to, to trogues um so yes i'm very familiar with sort of east coast style and northeast uh ipas but then moved okay. out here you know a while ago and uh like the West Coast, but um, tend to be a little dank for me, and and wanted to do a little, you know, a little less and a little brighter. I agree with you on that. The the the, the dank IPA thing, I, I think, is changing a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think, it, I think no, it, definitely. Is I think it's coming more brighter uh, because of these new kind of citrusy yeah, hops it's that are coming to suck through. Me in because <laughs> yeah. I, I've been anti IPA forever because yeah. I just I just can't get behind something that's a palate killer for me. Right. Yeah, and now. It's it's coming around where we're having a lot more aroma, a lot more stone fruit, right. a lot more melon kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. That kind of, and I really like that. It's right. much more interesting to me. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, we tail the recipe to do a lot more aroma. I mean, when we we talk about what we did with it, I mean, it's it's most of it's you know twenty minutes less and through, and we whirlpooled, and so we were going for the aroma, yeah, right? mm-hmm. and less of the you know the bitterness. So the only one that I've really had is a heady topper. Yeah. Uh, a listener sent it into the session f- several months ago, and it was a week old, and it just tasted like kind of trash. It was kind of like trash homebrew. It was like uh, DMS, and just didn't really smell all that great. Did you drink it out of the can? Uh, no, we poured it in the. Uh, we poured it the problem. Problem. That was it. Yeah. Oh, really? You have to drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah whatever. Did you chip whatever. it in the middle of the summer. Uh, when was that, Doc? Were you here for that? Mm, yeah, I, I want to so. say it was the spring. Mm. I forget when. Warren would know. Yeah. I did forget it, exactly when. Did it sit on the tarmac in Phoenix? Yeah, it probably. may have. It may have. Who knows? Mm. Uh, but but you know, and and look, I, I I don't know if it was uh, super. To me, it was as fresh as it can get because it was a week old. Right. Uh, but you're right; it could have been uh, totally mishandled in shipping. I have no idea. Uh, but that's the only example that I've had, and now that style is kind of creeping out. And I'm just against it, just based on aesthetic. I think it looks like dishwater. Right. I think it looks gross. Uh, and uh, Dave at Flattail and I brewed a beer similar intentions. And I never got to try it because it went on here and was gone in a day. So I never got to taste any of it all. So I'm glad that you guys had the same goal. Right. And um, I get to try this now. Great. So how 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 does it compare? So so we cloudy didn't try to make uh, heady, right? Like heady's great, but yeah. um, I actually think it's the West Coast version of the East Coast ales, mm-hmm. right? So we we were going more okay. like uh, Lawson's finest, sip of sunshine, very bright, which is. It's got a little haze to it, but um, is very crisp and drinks more like a session. Like it's what you want as a summer if you're going to drink double IPAs. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of sounds we're, totally, reason, uh, totally reasonable, reasonable right? and responsible. Totally responsible. Right. You know, we've served this keg. You know, at at multiple graduation parties. Shouldn't serve the eighteen year olds. By no, the way. that's not college, 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 college graduation. College graduation. Yeah. yeah, for uh, sure. And, you know, the, the K goes and it's in the summer. Everybody, you drink three, four, five. People think it's a session and it's, you know, eight, eight and a half percent. Do you warn them or like do you, or when no, they're, when they're throwing up, do you say, hey, by the way, gotcha. It's <laughs> gotcha. coming of age, right? That's yeah. how you, yeah. yeah, that's what you do. Yeah. But comparatively to, to a, 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 a I think it's better cloudy than cloudy. I don't think the Thank cloud you. adds anything. I don't think so either. You can get, so like, again, you can get the mouthfeel, you can get the creaminess, yeah. right? Like my wife says, oh, I like this one, it's creamy, and she doesn't like IPAs, right? Um, without, without doing that haze. I agree. Uh, okay, well, let's, let's uh, dive into this. Doc, let's make you go first, because you love uh, IPAs, especially oh, yeah. double IPAs. It uh, does, right? Oh, Doc's, yeah, Doc's know, empty again, I've got to refill. I was just jumping up and down on this one when he said, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so, originally, the, the, when, we, when I judged it, I had it in one of these... Cool stainless steel, the 
14 ounce or whatever yeah. that is. Swell bottles, yeah. Um, and now I'm drinking it out of that cool growler that you have. Two totally different beers. Oh, my God. Mm. So it just tells me this beer is fragile. Very fragile. Uh, totally different beers. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I when I first opened up, the, the aroma was just moss grapefruit. It was great. It was yeah. great, man. It just a lot of grapefruit came through. Uh, really clean hop aroma. Uh, maybe a little vegetal. Um because when you throw that many hops in there, you got to get some vegetal. But that was really on the back end of it. Yep. Um, uh, maybe and then and it just it got a little one dimensional for me, and that was out of the this bottle. Yep. Totally different coming out of that growler. This is almost totally different beer, and this one, it, it just. It's like the big brother of the of the other one. It, it, it's just it just comes across as wow, this thing is. Changed quite a bit. How long had they been in the uh, in the smaller bottles uh, versus the growler? Uh, so, I, actually, the, probably the difference is the the way we did a dry hop. So we did a circulating dry hop where we actually built a torpedo and a, basically a hop back out of a, a, a corny keg, uh, and I pulled off. So we did twenty gallons mm-hmm. in the batch, right? Okay. So I pulled off. Uh, started. I did four kegs in series, five gallons each, and then I pulled them off at different times. And so the one we actually put in in the this original mm-hmm. stainless steel, which is the vegetal, was the longest of the dry hop. And okay. It was probably a little too long. It was thirty six hours on full circulation. Um, this one was in the middle, so this was twenty four. So we pulled it All off right. 12, 12 hours earlier, which is again, if I did it again, I would stop it. Uh, 24, right? Because I think yeah. it, it over dry hopped and it gave a little of that vegetal note to this and probably killed the aroma. It did, yeah, it. It, well, it yeah, probably drove off the aroma on it because I didn't really get a complex aroma right. like I'm getting off of the other one. Right. So, two totally different beers right. on this and this whole thing. I'm. I mean, as far as package, when did you package oh, the packaging this? Packaging is about, I mean, so 10 days ago, maybe okay. 12. Days. Yeah, good. And the growler was tonight, tonight, right? Poured it off of a keg and okay. brought it in. That's okay. That was my question. Okay, go ahead, Doc. Sorry. So yeah, it's, it's just it, I just really tell the difference. It, it, right. Good straw color, um, possibly a little too dark for a for a double IPA, but I'm not going to count you down for that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Cara well, Munich. Yeah. So, uh, but it it, it that kind of adds to the mouthfeel mm-hmm. quite a bit. Um, uh, it, it's still kind of slightly hazy, which that's from the dry hopping. You got to get, you know, the oils and stuff coming coming through that. Um, Are you high? Yeah, it's no. You got, <laughs> that is no, okay, fucking well, clear as a bell. No, no, no I'm, I'm talking about. The, I'm, I mean, I'm talking about the first one. Yeah, the first one. Oh, okay. The first one was so a little hazy. The first for sure. one was the one my judging sheet from. <laughs> okay. Okay, All and right. it was a little on the hazy side, which is You're probably right. maybe little, the vegetable yep, stuff coming yep. through. You're right. Um, so I'm I'm trying to compare two different things here, but my my scoring sheet was off the first one. You're doing great, Larry. Totally You're doing great so far. Uh, lots of lots of fruity esters still. I still. You know, really got that coming through. Yeah. Uh, medium high bitterness, uh, but the cool thing is it didn't linger. It didn't sit on my tongue and just kill my palate. Yep. It was pretty substantially bitter. Yeah. It was. It was bitter, but, but it, it goes it, away. But it went away. Yeah. It didn't just like smoothed I, out. It's kind of those, dried of, out. I think it, with the water and the mineraliness. Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. And I really that's the saving grace for me because if if I get one and my palate's dead, I'm not liking your beer. But this one now the new it's kind of the newer style. It's like it's not crazy. It's it bitter up front, but it's not that that lingering bitter that that just happens sits, with a double IP. Yeah, yeah, it just sits on your tongue and the guy goes, Yeah, bitter. No, it's not it's not okay. Uh Yeah, we tried for probably two years to do exactly that. Get rid of that 
long like we'd, we you know we'd make double ipas different styles we'd try pliny yeah. clone etc and it was great and then 30 seconds after you took your sip you're still chewing it yeah like you said yeah. god it would kill you you're, right you're, yeah you're, you're chewing it trying to get saliva in your mouth right. to, to, to try to rinse it off of your tongue right. so yeah. that's exactly what we were going we were trying to get rid of the lingering bitterness and trying right. to there's a couple things like you said minerality we you know we threw a little corn sugar in so it'd clean or finish yeah we like screwed around with the the ph and the water balance right we added some phosphoric acid to the to the mash to bring it down get rid of the bicarbonate um so we you know we we did a lot of things to try to get rid of that we still want the bitterness i mean it is still a target 100 ibu right i mean it's a big right big hot bill but without right the, yeah okay yeah. Right, so are you still using phosphoric yeah 85 percent yeah. acidify the sparge water yeah it's a good way to keep astringency out of your way too because if you have astringency with a high bitter beer it just kills you so we have like 310 um, you know, bicarbonate where we are. I mean, it's yeah. really hard water. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. look at your shower, it gets green in like a week, right? I mean, it's super hard water. So you got to treat it if you're going to brew with it, unless you're doing a, you know, a northern German pills or something that wants real hardness. Yeah. yeah. You got to kill it. <laughs> yeah. You, you can almost, you can almost taste the, the difference in, uh, it could be because it's the phosphoric acid. Uh, if you've ever done a side by side brew with the different acids. No, I've never. The only acid lactic I tried. What other lactic uh, instead? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's lactic. Uh, you can use hydrochloric. You can use different ones in there. And the there's the main two are going to be lactic or phosphoric, yeah. and you can taste a difference. <laughs> lactic tastes it gives it kind of a sharper kind of sourness, but it's yeah. not really. But the the phosphoric almost gives it a soda pop kind right. of uh, almost a sweetness. Mm, okay, it, it, adds it, a little sulfate, right? Uh, the phosphoric doesn't it? No, no. No, just fo- just phosphorus. Fire, fire, phosphorus, but it's, it's 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 a different kind of really a different flavor profile mm. on it. And if you can match it to your different mm. beer style, and, and oh, until you point. do the two side by side ones, it's amazing. You can't really until you do that, yeah. and once you wow, you can really you really taste it. So, uh, good job on that, by the way. Um, uh, so I, I got a kind of a light mouth feel with it, which I liked. On, on the first one, it wasn't thin though. You know, people try to really dry out these things to the yeah. point where it's almost it's just nothing there it's anymore. Just nothing yeah. there anymore. Too uh, so, but you don't want it to be right. that that, <clears throat> that kind of chewy sweetness either. Yeah. And so it, it was it was a nice light mouthfeel. Really good on that one, um, without being thin. Which was nice. And then you were mentioning that you you know, using oats in there, mm-hmm. which kind of. Kind of adds to that because it's it gives you that that slickeriness. It gives you some thickness in that in that mouthfeel without being sweet or that that you know too much protein kind of thing. Yeah, I like using oats in a beer. It can kind of lighten up the body a little bit, but still give you a little a feeling of a little more substantialness to mm-hmm. it. A little, the oiliness. Yeah, and it could save you from being you know, too thin and mm-hmm. uh, watery, which we've all had those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of, kind of going, going past the point of what you're trying to right. do. Right. Uh, love the CO2 level. Uh, I still like the growler, growler much better. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, for the for the first bottle one, it just it it was okay. It was good in a lot of ways that you know I like about IPAs now. But I didn't <laughs> like before. Uh, so. I give it about a thirty-four in the first round. Okay. Uh, the growler one, totally loving that one. Yeah. So I I give it ten points more. The growler. Cool. I give it in, in the in a forty-three forty-four range now with because the growler is just so much fresher. It's yeah. Pick one. Well, it doesn't matter, I guess. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So great. Cool. Yeah. All right. You got, you got two beers, Judge, here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah two good price of one. Nice. Yeah. Well, like, so right. we, you know, we did a few, we held one thing constant, or a bunch of things constant and varied one and tried to experiment. And... Yeah. It, it shows. Yep. Yeah. That's what you got to do. All right, Brian, go yeah. for it, dude. You're yeah. Up. I agree with a lot of what Doc said overall that the, the growler, the, it tastes fresher and better. And um, we landed similarly score wise. Um, I really I, I enjoyed the aroma. I thought a nice um, tropical hop note come up front. I really like citrus. So when you said citrus, that didn't surprise me. I, I just brewed a, a citrus chinook like um, kind of red IPA thing today myself, and 
just kind of like uh, blending that with, with some different hops. I like the tropical stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Um, man. It's good. Yeah. A uh, little bready base malt, just kind of unassuming and, and pleasant. Um, you know, the, the esters come across, and I, I don't, I didn't want to use, use the word juicy, but it's like sometimes <laughs> you have uh, like what I call a ju- kind of a juicy fruit ester. It's right. like that juicy, mm-hmm. juicy fruit chewing gum right. in an aroma, you know, and it just, it has like a lot of different, like, you know, a little bit of tropical, a little bit of citrus, a little bit of uh, just different kinds of esters popping through that, and apple and just, you know, the fruit basket. Uh, of, of fun, so uh, yeah, that's what quality we're for. quality fruity esters in there for sure. Clean, no DMS, no diacetyl. Uh, appearance wise, I thought it was it was it was fairly clear, and uh, yeah, the the the, cake, the the growler one's even a little clear, more clear. But yeah, I was expecting a haze monster, so I was like, you know, it was nice <laughs> that it was at least reasonably clear. Yeah, so yeah, appearance wise, it was pretty good. Just the, had a low whitish head that that faded pretty quickly after pouring. Uh, again, might be some might be the glassware a little bit here, but I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, just fine pinpoint bubbles kind of ringing the glass at this point. So yeah, appearance wise, pretty nice, kind of where you want to be. A nice, a nice pale gold color. Uh, Flavor wise, it's a it's a very clean um, imperial IPA with with pleasant fruity tropical and citrus hops. Uh, the bitterness did stick out a little bit too high to me in the beginning on the um, the bottle version, and maybe the, you know I don't know if it was a little, little I don't know what it was, but yeah, it was just a little. The bitterness did seem to stick out a little bit, but it, with that mineraliness too in there, and it seemed like yeah, I was interested in talking about what you did to treat the water. Yep. Uh, minerally water imp- impression in there, but it's definitely balanced with the hops and that the citrus and and pineapple and other mango and stuff kind of lingering in the aftertaste. Really dig that. Uh, medium light body, very quaffable. Just uh, the the way that Doc was talking about the body, spot on. Uh, the carbonation is kind of medium low. I thought I could use a little bit more at the the first sample. I think the the growler version is a little is a little better there too. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, mouthfeel wise, pretty good. I didn't get uh, any big astringency, maybe just a little tiny, a tiny, tiny touch. But since you're acidifying your sparge water, that helps take care of a lot of that. And, uh, but yeah, you, you want to make sure you have enough uh, calcium in your water to keep your mash happy and do all the all the things you, you need yeah, to so do. Yeah, this there. is about 120 ppm okay. on calcium. We yeah. add a little gypsum. Good, good. Yeah, I get a little sulfatey thing. It's actually. very yeah. high in sulfate. We actually so the style I was going for was about two fifty oh, on the water yep. profile. Um, that's intentionally, pretty, it's high. Yeah, that's it's high. high. Makes it snap. Yeah, it just snap. <laughs> it plays um, off those hops in a pretty nice way. So but it's yeah, maybe could, a little high. I can bring it down. a little Probably bit. dial that back a little yeah. bit. And but yeah, as long as you have enough calcium, you can yeah get it in there different ways. <laughs> Um, but I don't know if you built up partly from RO and, and blended in some of your water or what you ended up doing. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. But, uh, yeah, overall it was a nice, pleasant drinking uh, uh, Imperial IPA, a lot of excellent qualities. I would just, um, well, I don't know. Honestly, tasting it again, and and, and I agree that the, the growler version is a little better. But um, I was going to say, you know, backing off the bitterness just a little bit, and bringing up the CO2 a little bit uh, would help, or watching the bottling technique if it's yeah. fine from the keg. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you might want to play with that water a little bit and just, just dial back. It's getting plenty of that sulfate accent that you get that, that, that makes the hops play so nicely, but it's maybe a little too much. And I think if you pulled that back, then some of the, um, the tropical notes would be a little more prominent in the flavor because I like the aroma better than the flavor. Um, I thought the aroma was great and and had a nice inviting tropical-y thing. You might also try blending in some different hops besides just Citra, yeah. which it's one of my favorites, but I like blending it with others. Uh, do some of the, the experimental hops that are coming out. Some of them are just great, too, and just really fun stuff to play with. Um, yeah, you probably won't blend in any any Simcoe since you're yeah. going for an East Coast style. <laughs> Man, I was going to say, the first time I had an all Simcoe IPA, I was like, what the hell is this hop? And it's like, just this. it tastes like garlic and onions. And, you know, yeah. why does it no. even like this? It's but then when cellar, you taste yeah. one that's that's balanced and, and you you taste a Pliny, that beer is good in, in its own right. And it's a very, you know, it's reached a balance where you 
you get enough of the uh, tropically and other elements to to play off that dankness, then it works. But just dankness by itself, I agree. It's just yeah. too one dimensional. Yeah. And, you know, you can swing too far the other way and just have only tropically, but right. you can you can accent it with other light things in there to have to have some fun. But it seems like you guys are into experimenting with yeah. with uh, what you're doing and 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 having some, you know, putting in some new ideas and and playing around with it. So, um, but yeah, I scored it a 35 for the first one, but probably the uh, the growler version I'd be more like a 38 or something like that. Okay, it's a, it's a nice nice clean drinking beer. I uh, just need some slight adjustments. Awesome. The funny thing is, is we tasted these cakes last week. <laughs> and we were sitting at the table in his backyard thinking, which which cake should we give him? <laughs> we chose wrong, I guess. <laughs> who, who, wait. <laughs> who, who chose wrong? Your wife. Who, yeah, oh, well, burn. No, I don't know. Uh-oh. It was you. <laughs> Throw the ladies under the bus. No, you guys did, you guys did fine, no, man. I mean, you, I think, I, think uh, 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 I mean, the hard part is it's not really style. Right. So, uh, but but you hit your target, you, what you were trying to do. And bringing two? Exactly. That was key. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, we were, <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. So, so, again, we wanted to get rid of any of that kind of mossy danky. Like, probably go a little too far, like you said, over to the right, but yep. intentionally. I mean, we do a, a West Coast style IPA as well, yeah. and we use the. You know, all the Pliny hops and do all of that, and it's great, but it's that dank, musty. CTZ. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the and, CTZ is where all the And our buddy, you know, our friends from. and siblings and wives that, you know, like IPAs, that's great, but anybody else, they're like, oh my God, it's, I, can't, I can't drink this, right? It's so just, I wanted to make something that was a, still a eight and a half double IPA, had a lot of hop, but you could give it to people that weren't. Like, super yeah, IPA yeah, guys, exactly. right? Yep. Yeah. yeah, and see, so they're like, "Oh, that's juicy and great and fresh, and I could have four. Yeah. Dock, dock them yeah. two points uh, for the word yeah. you juicy. Uh, juicy, please." And then you go back and you yeah. go, "Well, that was eight and a half percent, so you probably shouldn't it, have four. That's what I was going to say. Is it's pretty? Yeah, it's pretty deceptive. It doesn't taste like an eight and a half percent. It does like, not. No, it does not. It definitely tastes like somewhere maybe in the sevens or yeah. thereabouts. It yeah. it really well. Super smooth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you guys have any questions for these? Uh, Two, two co-hosts of mine. <laughs> uh, so playing with the water profile again. Yeah. So we added. So again, we you know we have really hard water. Like I said, where where we we are in San Jose, um, decent calcium, but like you know way up. So we we add the acid. I'll try the lactic. That's interesting. Yeah. Didn't didn't know about different styles of acid. Um, and we added we added some gypsum. Right. So I did about one one and a quarter grams per gallon. So so dial that back to maybe one. 70.75, just bring that sulfate count a l- down a little bit is what you'd recommend? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't go above. I'd stick around a 180, 190. Yeah. 250 is really uh, pushing it. Yeah. Uh, do you know what your sodium level is? Uh, I can give it to you in a second. It's 60, I want to say. Huh. Uh, uh, oh, actually, really low, 15. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah that, that you, you, those will clash really yeah. bad. You want to watch yeah. that? Um, yeah. so I kind of watch that. Yeah. Sodium's really low. 140 calcium, 36 magnesium, <laughs> 240 salt, like I said, 240, 250 sulfate, 50 oh. chloride. Is and it? then we the acid brought the bicarbonate down to, you know, 50. Right? And the, these from, numbers are off from the uh, theoretical, off the San Jose yeah. water uh, profile. Yeah, so that's we've funny. never uh-huh. measured. You, you, need, yeah, you need the measure. IDIP. <laughs> right now, because they, they're, they're switching reservoirs back and forth, and they're going to just mess with you. Right. So your consistency is going to be right. out the window. Right. We have yeah, one, a BN one. I've been waiting for you to get your homebrew set up to give it to you, let you, let you play around with it. Nice. Yeah. He, like, yeah. he gets the cool stuff and then lets me play with it. So. Yeah. After we've all used it. Nate's it, already used it. Yeah. Brian's I know, used it. Then I finally get to play with it. You get thirds, man. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the, the difference that, the, again, what we were trying to sort of uh, experiment with yeah. and, you know, hold everything else constant, 20-gallon 20, 20 batch, and then we did this. So the frustration for us, you know, we like to make IPAs, doubles, et cetera, um, but that, like, you know, waiting seven days, 14 days for the dry hop. And then another, you know, week to carb, week ten days to carbonate. So you're like, you're out a month. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was you know frustrating. So we tried to figure out how to condense that. Yeah. So we were looking online. We found this, you know, sort of process. Guy was saying, well, if you circulate right during a dry hop, mm-hmm. um, you're obviously it's just like uh, doing the, the the yeast starter where you're on a stir plate, right? And you're mm-hmm. you're getting. Yeah. I do the manual version of that. Like, yeah, right. But I mean, how often <laughs> are you gonna go down there? Right? Out there at three in the morning. Oh, anytime yeah, to shake stir, the more, stir. Yeah. So so you know we we experiment. We were like, all right, can we do it in a carboy? 
and we put a magnetic stir underneath with a large stir bar. Oh, that doesn't work. Can't do that. Yeah. So we played around. And so we ended up doing a, sit, uh, a setup where um, we're doing it through um, our, our pump that we do our normal okay. um, brewing when we, you know, we do the, the whirl, whirlpool and et cetera. Um, and I took one keg and I cut about a half an inch off the dip tube put one of those little sleeves uh, sieves sleeves yeah. on it okay um, and use that one as the dry up so we put all the all the hop in the first keg and then I did four kegs in series and then pumped it yeah there you go he's he's got the picture show doc show doc <laughs> um, so <laughs> right so I got four jumper together yeah running through the pump and you can just circulate the whole thing and nothing clogs because you have the the filter on that first dip tube. Like a mash screen, essentially. Exactly, mesh screen, exactly okay. what it is. So right. you've got a mesh screen on the first. Um, I'm, with so you. I'm with you. you turn the whole thing on, and yeah. you're, you, you, you're literally circulating the whole thing through. Um, so the, so we pulled one off at 18 hours, one at basically 24 hours, and one at 36. The the ones you guys didn't like as much was the longest, okay. uh, 36. Yeah. So, okay. But, I mean, I'm telling you, you can dry hop, a seven-day dry hop in 24 hours. Yeah. And it's done. Makes same effect. You yeah. get the same effect, same results. Same results, same better? effect, same utilization. Well, I think it's great. I like, would think it'd be better because it's less contact with all the Same the green thing, stuff, and that's right? what I think as it went longer... And it was in contact long, you know, with, with the stuff. So, right. so if you, you know, even turn up the volume and, and crank it even, you know, maybe even a little faster. You get more of the fresh lupulin-y stuff exactly. than the plant matter. Right. So we, yeah. we found that as a cool technique and, and had a lot of fun doing that. And then basically just jumpered them into another set of kegs, used the same setup and carbonated. So we were talking, you know, with uh, Tasty out there and, and did the same. I put a T on. Um, the setup, and I have I put my CO2 on mm-hmm. so that I can turn that on, and I can do this, the the um, circulating through the four kegs with CO2 pumping in, and you can carbonate in about an hour. There you go. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, good, Brendan. You said you couldn't uh, stir play it. Yeah, curve. it just didn't quite work in the glass carboy. Do- it's kind of domed yeah. a little yeah. bit. Oh no, I, I got that handled. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you do. Uh, you have to use a special stir bar. It's, it's called a barbell. Yeah. And then you have to, you no, know, it, it looks like a freaking barbell. And it, you got to get it on the top of the dome. And yeah. then uh, we'll talk about it afterwards, how you get that thing on the top of the dome, and then it works. Huh. I, I think Lee had a setup like that, too, when they were, yeah, they had his yeah. auction, and, and they had a, a thing like, they, the way they explained it, it was like, well, it seemed like this stirs a whole carboy. Yeah. Uh, like, I, uh, I've been doing this for yeah. uh, for 10 years. I can yeah. see what he was so doing. Okay. Okay. It, it was frustrating to me, and so I figured out how to, how I could make this happen, and then get to that get that stir bar in the middle of that dome, and, yeah, you can do it. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it, for us, it, it, you know, we can do 20. I don't even haven't even pushed it, right? We'll see how many you can put in series for one, right. before one of those. Uh, what's the pump we have? Uh, the Marsh pump. Yeah, the Marsh pump. Before that, like, kicks out. But um, you just basically have to sacrifice, not even really, but one corny where you cut a little bit off the dip tube and use that yeah. as yeah. Our, I use our, our torpedo. I use that as a, as a brake tank. So I, yeah. I pump from the secondary into that and let it sit and then. Yeah, that crack, cold crash, and that comes off of that yeah. one. As long as you're not but, getting any oxygen picked. Yeah. No, there's not. It's all, yeah. it's all, all sealed. Right? It's all sealed. Too. Like everything, yeah. rack it from the the primary, right, right into the CO2 filled, mm-hmm. um, uh, basically the, the cornies as secondaries, and you just drop in your dry hop and, and circle it. It's the same thing Sierra Nevada is doing with their torpedo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure. Yeah. There's exactly no reason you guys is, can't put two March pumps in series. Yeah, if you needed to, right? Uh, well, if was, you said if you put enough of them in there, right, you're, exactly. you're going to have to do something because you're going to get some drag. Right. Right, yeah. For yeah. now, we can do four of them in series with the single pump. Well, and you're not, it, there's no oxygen nope. beat up. No. I mean, with yeah. a March pump, it's not self priming. Nope. So you, there is a little yeah. bit of air in there, and you got to purge it up. But I would be afraid no. that you would beat the beer up and maybe go like a sure flow, like a diaphragm pump. We but this debated actually that. works really well. Yeah. yeah. We had a long text conversation about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, were you guys millennials? Yeah, oh, I guess. Emojis so. and shit? And he lives <laughs> every day. His, his yeah. protest. Everything. And his, his wife is pissed off about the, uh, the noise of the pump going overnight. Yeah, it's so a loud I, pump. Yeah, yeah. yeah. March so, pump's loud. So I thought the diaphragm, because I thought the same thing, that, that, that the March pump would just beat the crap out of the beer. Yeah. And, 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 uh, but, you no, know. no bubbles. I mean, I can show you. I took a well, video yeah. of it cycling through. Zero yeah, bubbles. Yeah, as long as you don't no see foam, anything no going nothing. through the tube nothing. Thing. Well, No, it came out Should great. Unless, yeah. Until you turn on the CO2. And the really interesting part is when you're doing the carbonation, because you got the T, right? So you have the in coming and the out and then the CO2 coming in. Yeah. So clean, as, clear as anything. And you see these bubbles just pulling in to the, to the out, right? The CO2 in, coming into in. Solution. In yeah. a solution. It's awesome. You do that for, literally, because you cold crash it, right? Yeah. And so then you 
hook that up. I have a uh, Guys, you know logger fridge, and then you turn that on, and it's an hour, and it's done. Don't think that had any uh, head retention issues. Mm-hmm. Do, doing that with the with the pump affect any? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, how do you how do you get a little more? Well, what do you think? So this I poured this what twenty minutes ago, like. How do I how do I get a little I, more? I don't think it's any different than uh, you go out to the bar and get a beer like um, that. What do you what do you want? What how how do I get a little more? If I want if I wanted to keep a little more head on there, yeah, a wheat, wheat will do it. Yeah, because yeah. it's got more Not protein. Pills. Or, so I, I no. use like four percent carapils. Carapils will do that. Yeah, in the recipe, but a little try, more up. Try, it. try a little more wheat in there. Can and, we go over there? You'll, you'll get it because it'll, it'll get. Uh, yeah, please. go for it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go for it, and then I got to take another break. So yeah, it's like uh, it's basically two thirds Belgian pills as base malt. Uh, 15% Vienna, right? Uh, add a little bit of that copper caramel kind of color nice. to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the the rest of the adjuncts, it's, you know, f- say, I want to say 6% um, Carapils, 5% Caramunic. Uh, and then I add some corn sugar because I want it to finish. So it's like 3% corn sugar. Uh, I'm probably missing one other. Oh, and then the oats, right? Like about four yeah. percent uh, of the flaked oats. But yeah, add a little wheat back into that oh, one, and and the wheat has a lot of protein in it, and you know more you'll, than oat. And what do you mash yeah. at? Yeah, it, it's a different kind of thing. Uh, oats are kind of oily, so they kind of kill your head. So interesting. Yeah, so you you it's got you got to kind of kind of compensate for that. And the OG and the FG on this one, uh, ten seventy six, and finished at ten eleven. Yeah, that's cool. good. Nice, nice. Excellent. Yeah, so that'd be interesting. Add a little more wheat. It wouldn't. Yeah, I guess if I had three percent, it's not going to cloud it up. No. The other no, question I have for you guys: Did you clarify it at all? Yeah. You did some biofine. Yeah. We did a little gelatin. Or gelatin. Yeah. Cold, we typically we cold crash for twenty four hours. Yeah. Rack it into another keg. Because uh, that Vermont yeast it likes to stay up. Yep. yep. Cold <laughs> it. it stays in the juicy zone. About thirty eight. And this is the uh, third generation of that. Yeah, I think this was the third. Cool. Yeah, we cold crashed it about thirty eight. Rack it another and then add a little gel. Sometimes the second cool. or third. Please take a break. The guy's the got his finger on the button. Yeah, everyone shut the He's fuck up. Be- finger on the button. Shut up! It's Dr. Home. We'll be right back. Talking talkersons. Do you know the three most important rules in brewing? Sanitation, sanitation, and sanitation. And no one does it better than Five Star Chemicals. Five Star knows sanitation. You can only sanitize clean equipment. And Five Star knows how to clean, too. For craft brewers and home brewers, Five Star has what you need to keep your fermenters, serving tanks, kegs and draft lines sparkling and free of any beer-spoiling bacteria. PBW, caustic, acid cleaners, star sand, Santa Clean, lubricants and defoamers, pH stabilizers, and more. Five Star Chemicals has cleaning supplies, safety supplies, heat exchangers, pumps, hoses, and valves. And Five Star is proud to offer eco-friendly products that exceed customer expectations. If you have a cleaning problem, you need the Five Star Solution. Visit fivestarchemicals.com or call 800-782-7019. 800-782-7019. And get the Five Star our treatment today. Admit it. Homebrewing is not always free of frustrations. Years ago, brothers Bill and Jim Mitchell decided to minimize those frustrations and create an entirely new brewing process and a brand new kitchen appliance, the Pico Brew Zymatic. The Zymatic sits on your kitchen counter and connects to the internet via Wi-Fi. It comes with access to a huge recipe library full of award-winning beers and can brew your next batch at the push of a button, improve repeatability, and refine your recipes with the Pico Brew Zymatic. With minimal cleaning and hassle, the Zymatic enables anyone to brew craft beer in the comfort of their own kitchen. Just add your ingredients and the process of home brewing becomes simplified and automatic, allowing you to focus on what really matters while you brew. At Pico Brew, they believe everyone should be able to enjoy the art of home brewing and make their own damn good craft beer. See the Zymatic in action today at PicoBrew.com. I'm sorry to tell you this, but we're going to have to pour you out. Back to Dr. Homebrew. All right. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. This is the uh, moment in the show where we uh, talk about prizes. We have some prizes to give away. And since you guys are the only uh, homebrewers on the show... Wait, there's you, a line of like 10 people out there. You well, get, they don't count. 
We're they don't feeling count. festive and we want to give you guys prizes. <laughs> Just right. shut up and accept them. Yeah. <laughs> Love prizes. Uh, you guys get every prize. You get the $40 gift certificate to Grog Tag. Go to grogtag.com. You can get customized labels, caps, Sweet. metal signs, tap handles, even all that kind of stuff. Grogtag.com. Check them out. Uh, you guys get that. Yes! Yeah! yeah. Our lovely, the lovely folks at Grog Tag. And you get a beer bug. You guys heard What's about the beer bug? bug? Oh, What's holy beer bug? crap. That is great. You've heard no, about no, it? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. They're going to be fighting over that one. They're going to be fighting over it. Yeah, who's going to get it? So basically, you, uh, it's, it's, uh, there's a, a weight that hangs in your, uh, in your cardboard, your fermenter, or whatever. Uh, yeah, it's a, a little, yeah, they call it a torpedo. <laughs> yeah, not to be confused with, with your hop torpedo. System, yeah. And what it does, it relays accurate uh, temperature oh, and gravity. Uh, that's awesome. To it, an app. So if you guys can use it, you yeah. guys can all download we all the app. Together, that's awesome. So that fantastic. I think that'd be great. Right on. Yeah. So there wow. you go. Beer well, bug. Well, I brew. They help. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Hey, no. Beerbug.com. <laughs> Beerbug.com. Thank you very much. You guys have wow, been uh, awesome. good Beer sponsors for, to us, and uh, and uh, we really appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, the beer you know, bug is pretty fun to play with. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. So there you go. That's it. I think we've all done right. all of our stuff that we need to do. All the stuff. All the things. Did you check all the boxes, JP? <laughs> I haven't checked them all yet, okay. but I will for well, sure. Uh, Did wh- you check the chit-chat box? Wh- I think what should we bring back next? That. Whatever you guys want. Sorry. Whatever you guys want. Back. It's been great. <laughs> I, I really yeah. do want you guys to do a cloudy version and non cloudy right. version, just side by side to really see. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. that's just that's just me. Because just don't find it. We got a double chocolate style, man. We'll bring that next time. Let's do it. Sounds good. Thanks, fellas, for coming Thanks. all the way up here. Thanks for having us. It was thank a good you. time. Good beers. Awesome. And uh, Doc, thank you very much. Of course. Brian, thank you very much. Um, you betcha. All right, and uh, we'll see you guys later. This has been Doctor Homebrew. Oh, uh, listen to all the other shows on the Brew Network. Okay, thanks. Bye. Okay.